What are we doing today? We are going car shopping for my firstborn, my oldest daughter, Ruby. Merry Christmas. We're gonna surprise her with a car for Christmas. Now what I wanna do, my strategy with this, y'all see me buying Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that, but when I was a youngster, my parents didn't really have the money to buy me a car. They tried to buy me a car a couple of times that, that I could use, but the cars only ran for a couple of weeks and then they broke down never to run again. And the first time I actually had a car, I had to buy it myself. And because we didn't have the money to afford a car, it created a drive in me to be able to do what I had to do to be able to get money, to be able to afford a car and the other things that I need in life. I didn't want to get to the point now where, okay, yeah, I got money to buy my daughter whatever car she wants, but I don't want to take away her drive by just giving her some crazy new car or something like that. Now, when she was in high school, I leased her a car for two years and she drove it her junior year and her senior year. And when she graduated, I was like, okay, what are you going to do? She went off to college. She couldn't have a car at college anyway. Then she came back. Then I got her a used car to see how she would take care of it. And of course, if she does the right things, then I'll be like, okay, bless you with another car, a better car, whatever. So now it seems like she's trying to get her focus on and take my advice on things. And so, okay, I can get behind that. So I want to bless her with a vehicle now, but it's not going to be like some brand new car or something like that. I want to find her a good used car that'll run and won't have no problems. And then she can level up, but she's got to put in her, her own hard work to level up, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want it to just be like me giving her life. I want her to give herself life. What's up YouTube, it's your boy Will Motivation back again with another video. And today, finally, the update on the vehicle that we got for my daughter. If you can see there behind me, let me try to focus in on it. Yeah, what do you see there? That's right, we just picked up for my daughter, a new Nissan Versa. Now it's not new, new. It's actually a used vehicle, 2020 Nissan Versa. I'm gonna show you guys the car now. And we're gonna talk about why I got this car for my daughter instead of some of the other options that were out there. So let's reveal the new Nissan Versa. So yeah, this is not a brand new, new car. It's a 2020, has about 60,000 miles on it. I want it now, it has new stuff on it, like new tires. I just got it. I'm actually at the Nissan dealership because I just got the car inspected. I just did a service. Like people were telling me to watch out for the CVT transmission on these cars. I wanted to get this transmission serviced and inspected and that was done. But this is the new car. Why I did not go with a new car? I'm gonna give you some of my reasons for not doing that. I was thinking about going with a new car, but essentially it boils down to really the only, the only major benefit a used car in this scenario is you save money. So I wanted to save money on this vehicle just in case my daughter needs anything else for the car. Of course, you wouldn't have to worry about that new car, but she might need that money for something else in general as I'm trying to make sure that she's good where she is in life right now. So I chose to get the used car, save a little bit of money. If I had gone with the new car option, it would have cost me probably about six or 7,000 more than this. Um, what I paid for this car was 14,000. We picked it up actually right after Christmas and my daughter has not yet taken delivery of the car because I'm still waiting for the paperwork so we can get the insurance in her name and all that good stuff. And I wanted to get an extra key for it and I wanted to get it checked out at the Nissan dealership so that we can make sure it's good to go. And so I just got done getting it checked out and they said everything was all green. So the brakes, the, it's got new tires on it. But look at this thing, man. Let's take a, take a look at the car. It looks like a brand new car in the back. Now the front, I still wanna get it clean for my daughter as well. So it looked like the person that had the car before used it to commute and they probably spilled some coffee. Hey, I need some detailers. If you're a detailer and you're watching this video and you're in central Ohio or somewhere in Ohio, holla at your boy, cause I wanna get this thing looking like new before I give it to my daughter. We're gonna talk about how it drives. So this is gonna be kind of like a review video at the same time. The Nissan Versa. I do like the styling on this vehicle. I like the color on the vehicle. I think my, I thought my daughter would like it. I wanted to kind of surprise her. So I didn't take her car shopping in this case. And my daughter's not too picky, but she loved it. I took it to, to let her see it the other night. She was excited. This is an upgrade definitely over the last two cars that she's had. The last car she had, yeah. Yeah, the last car she had was a Ford Escape and it was a used car, it had a lot of miles on it and eventually that car died. It had, it had some little issues with it when I got it. But the car before she had was a Toyota Corolla and that was like a 2018 and it was new. It was a, I leased it for her to drive when she was 
in her last two years of high school. So she's familiar with that. But this car actually is newer than that Toyota Corolla, has more features than that Toyota Corolla. The other thing I like about this car is it has some really good safety features. So that's one of my considerations when I'm buying a car for my daughter, my mom, that kind of thing. It's a safety consideration. So this car, if you're like trying to park and stuff like that, it won't even let you crash or bump into the car behind you or in front of you. Cause the brakes are kind of aggressive. I was backing it up one day close to the curb and it threw the brakes on on me. So I was like, okay, well that'll that'll help my daughter in her case when she's driving this car. So it has good safety features. It has blind spot monitoring. It has cruise control. And look at this car. It also has CarPlay, check it out. And it's wireless because I hooked up this little dongle thing here that you can get like on Amazon and you plug it in and you connect your, your wireless phone to it. Look, yeah, it's connected to my phone right now and it can wirelessly give you CarPlay. Yeah, you get all of, all of those features with CarPlay. Check out the steering wheel, right? You got your volume controls on the steering wheel. You got your track control. You control the, the screen on here. It has a bunch of different settings. Look at the settings. Change, watch this. Look. Driving aids. It even has a tachometer on here. Look, you can move it over to the music, the tachometer right there. Yeah, it's got all kind of stuff on here, man. Oh, the gas mileage too. So I drove 45 miles already and it's still on full. <laughs> Yo, that beats everything that I'm driving right now. Carbon. Oh yeah, we got the carbon spec for everybody out there. This carbon is better than the carbon in my Ferrari. <laughs> nice. Psych. Oh, look at the leather dash. This is leather too, folks. That's leather. That's a good look right there. It has ambient lighting that's adjustable. With that little on off button right there. That's your ambient lighting. That's crazy. This car got ambient lighting. It's got push to start. It doesn't have remote start, but look at it. Lock, unlock, trunk release, panic. All that stuff works great. Your screen, it's about a seven, seven inch screen, I think. Six or a seven inch screen. Yeah, your carbon right there. Your parking, your reverse neutral drive and low. That's your old school gear shifting knobs. All right, so let's let's drive this car. This has, I believe, a 1.7 liter engine or like a 1.6 liter engine. Horsepower is like not a lot. This is not like a car you buy for high horsepower. But one thing I do like about it is when you press the gas, the car immediately responds and it goes. And that CVT transmission is pretty smooth. It doesn't do any weird stuff like some other ones. But the car is pretty roomy. It's a good. It's like a good car for like a you know you got a daughter in your in her twenties and you're trying to help her get situated. It's a good car. So let me put on my seatbelt, man. We're gonna drive this car. So here we go. I do a lot of how to drive videos. <laughs> If I do a how-to drive video on a Nissan Versa, I don't know how many people would, would, would watch that, man. Would you guys watch that? Like, if I if, if I did a how-to drive video on regular cars, would you guys watch that? If you would, I'll do it. I know some of my reviews that I've done on regular cars have done well. Like, I did a review on a uh, Ford. Not a, was it a Ford? No, it was a Chevy. I forgot. It was their new little SUV truck that came out. Y'all probably know better than me. Some of you guys probably saw the video. I reviewed that car. It's got over 200,000 views on my channel because I like all cars. Like, believe it or not, I drive a Ferrari F8, a Ferrari 488, a Lamborghini, a Huracan, Audi RS3, a BMW M4. I drive a lot of fast and fun cars. But believe it or not, I still like driving regular cars like this. I actually like driving this car. I think for me, it's like, it's different. Like, I like getting into a car and it's a different experience. It's almost like playing a video game to me. Like you get in it and it feels a certain way. So you have to drive the car to how it drives best. But anyway, I like this car. So let's do an acceleration test. We're, let's say you have to pass somebody, right? There's nobody over here, but we're gonna pass somebody. We're going 30, 30 something miles an hour. The speed limit is 45. And let's punch it in the CD, CVT transmission and see what happens. So I think those gear shifts are simulated. So this car does not have a lot of horsepower. So while it did accelerate, it didn't accelerate like no Lambo or no Ferrari or nothing like that, but it does pull. I think uh, what I like most about it is like when I did the test drive in this car, there were three grown, grown ass men in the car. And while I was doing the test drive, the car didn't lag like torque and power when we had those big, three big humans in the car. It drove fine. So I was impressed by that. So the torque off the line is really good. It's really, I think it's gonna be safe too. Like, cause when you're pulling out in the traffic and you look both ways and you're like, okay, can I make it out in front of this car without slowing down too much in front of them? 
In this car, you can pull out in the traffic fine. Now the passing power though, once you're rolling, you need a little bit more horsepower rather, you know, as opposed to torque. And I mean, it, 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 it is lacking. Like if I had to scale them on one, one to 10 for, for what kind of car it, car it is, I give it a five like middle of the road, no better, no worse. But taking off from a stop and the pedal and throttle feel, I give it a, for what it is, I give it an eight, because it does feel responsive. Uh, I, I do like that. I like to press the gas and the car goes. And in this car, the steering is light and feels good and it's predictable and it doesn't do any funny stuff. So I'll get the steering for what it is. Like I'm rating this car based on it being sort of a economy car in that 15 to 20,000 range. So for that, I give the steering a nine out of 10. I don't I don't really know. I like the steering wheel. Steering wheel is real nice. It's a flat bottom steering wheel. Normally you get that in sports sports cars or sportier cars. So I get the steering, we'll give it a nine out of 10. Suspension, suspension is actually a little hard. I'm not gonna lie, suspension is a little hard. So I would give the suspension five out of 10, six out of 10, you know what I'm saying? For me, five is not a bad thing. Five is just middle of the road. All right, so that's suspension. Features, comfort features. This is the SV version. I almost forgot to mention that. This is the Nissan Versa SV, 2020 Nissan Versa SV. And sport vehicle, I think is what it stands for for them. It's not like the Lamborghini Aventador SV, which stands for Super Veloce, which is super fast. It's not that. <laughs> hey, but we could pretend, we could pretend this is a, a Super super Veloce, <laughs> Nissan Versa Super Veloce. Oh yeah, that was super fast. All right, back to the story. What were we talking about, the uh, suspension? Yeah, suspension's a little a little stiff, man. I, I, I give a minute of a rope. All right, so the features of the car. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about, features. Okay, with the SV version of this car, you get everything. You get the safety features, blind spot monitoring, your safety your, for the rear front parking sensors. What else do you get? The Apple CarPlay stereo, where you can connect it to your phone. It's not wireless, but I, but you can set it up to be wireless and get the little the little add-on thing from Amazon. Cruise control, keyless entry, push button to start, um, steering wheel controls to control your stereo and stuff. So you know it's got all the it's got all the basic stuff that you would need: your power windows, your door locks. Something cool that it does. I'll show you guys when we get home. When I park the car, it has this ambient lighting on the outside almost like underglow which hey i grew i grew up in the 80s underglow in the 80s and early 90s was a thing that you could get on your car and i mean some, some people still do it and you know so it's like a little cool little feature there's lights on floating under your car this car actually has that from the factory it has underglow when you unlock the car and uh, i don't know if it doesn't when you like it but we'll i'll show you guys when we get home it's kind of cool so that's a nice feature, man. This car, features wise, I give it the, uh, I give it a nine out of ten, eight point five nine out of ten for the features that this car has. All right, so acceleration, speed, power, torque, that kind of thing. I'm giving it a, I'm giving it a seven or a six. Like I said, it's middle of the road, but it does have its good and its 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 bad sides. So we talked about steering, suspension, acceleration. You're probably wondering what's the price range for a car like this and the quality rating nice materials nice quality no rattles and stuff as you can see we're driving there. there's nothing no weird sounds you just hear the, just hear the tires going across the ground so quality materials build quality i give it a i give it a nine out of ten but i don't know how it's gonna wear you know 10 years from now but yeah man this is a good car if you're trying to pick up something for you know commuting or for your kids or something like that uh, styling though, I give styling high marks. We looked at, the, we saw the exterior of the car. I give styling on this car like a, for what it is. I give it a, I give it a nine out of ten for what it is. Like if it's not, it's not a sports car, right? It's a, it's a small, compact, economy car for commuting and getting around with four doors. And for that being what it is, I give it high marks. I give it like a nine. 8.5 9 out of 10 so yeah this is a good little car man i give it two thumbs up we'll see how it it, it it goes now i'll tell you something crazy though i was gonna get a key made at the dealership they wanted to charge me 400 dollars. part of that's to buy the key part of that's to program it so i went home and went online i was like nah forget that man that sounds like gouging so i went home and went online i found a key for this car keep keep key, key file for this car 30 bucks 
and I found this little tool you can buy to program the key for like 80 bucks. So yeah, I'm gonna save a lot of money on that, but they need to stop just gouging people for stuff like that. This is not like 500 bucks or $480 to get a new key for this car. That's like the same price as like a Ferrari or a Lambo key, man. Like four or 500 bucks? Stupid. Not gonna happen. Not under my watch. All right, let's hit it right here. We gotta accelerate, let's go. Let's go, let's go Nissan, come on. Go, go, go. I need to be watching the um, RPMs and see what the RPM shot up to. Let's watch the RPMs. Let's move this over here to RPM. All right, see the RPMs there? Let's, let's hit it. And <laughs> that's that CVT, man. That's that CVT. Hey, we got to stretch the legs on this thing, make sure it's good for my daughter. Yeah, it's good, man. This car is good. All right, so on my way home, when I get to the crib, I'll get out, we'll walk around the car one more time. I'll show you the guys this little ambient lighting thing that the car does, it's pretty cool. And yeah, this is the car we went with for my daughter. Hey, if she keeps staying on track with her stuff, man, might have a video, me get my daughter uh, uh, something exotic or something. <laughs> so we're back home. Oh, look, there it is. There's a little under, under lighting. You kinda can't see it that good. Let me go to the other side of the car. The lights light up. And there's a little under light. You can see it right there, the little shadow. I thought that was pretty cool when I saw that because I don't know any other cars that do that, at least not in this price range. But yeah, overall, man, this car gets high marks from me. Let's see if we can open the trunk. Let me show, show you guys the trunk here. Excuse me, it's got a trunk release. Yeah, man, nice big trunk. Look at that. Looks like they vacuumed it for me. Nice big trunk, though. Put about three bodies in there. We measure trunks and body sizes. You can fit probably about two bodies in there. So you pr press the lock button and the horn honks. Look at, the, look, at the, look at the front end, man. Very attractive car. Very attractive car. It was the best looking of all the cars I was looking at getting for her. This is what she needs to get into next, uh, RS3. That's what we, that's what, that's the goal for, for Ruby's next car. <laughs> But look at the rear end, look, SV. We got the SV sticker. It's like a Lambo, man. It's like a, a Venador SV. Look at the, look at the, the rear splitter. That's that's real too. Body color like the like, like the Lambo, like my Huracan is a body color splitter on the back. Yeah, this car, they styled this car right, man. They probably have some fun when they were designing this car. Like, look at it compared to the, the RS3. Look, look. It's, it's, I mean, that's why you gotta give it high marks. For what it is, it's not an RS3 with 400 horsepower. It's something with 100 and some horsepower, but very drivable, very fun little car. Two thumbs up and congrats to my daughter, Ruby. Enjoy the car, take care of it and uh, level up.